know it's one of your questions about, you know, how do we talk to you? Um, uh, always stop me when, when you see me. I'll always come up. If I'm, if I'm racing to a meeting, I'll let you know I can't talk right then. Uh, but the whole reason I roam around um, is to see how people are doing. And I don't like, you know, walking into the studios because I don't want to disturb people while they're working. Uh, so generally when I'm roaming the hallways, uh, uh, I, I'm there for, for people to chat with. And we also, uh, uh, any, any student who wants to make an appointment with me, I can make an appointment with me. Um, you know, the Maria, who's my assistant, knows that 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 takes priority. Uh, and so, so sometimes it's single students. Sometimes it's a, a group of students that might share a same question. We got snacks with the dean, and we have roaming the hallways. Or uh, when we had our lecture series, it would be you know before and after lecture series, and all the different events that we used to have on campus. You know the the symposia, the the discussions, and and things like that. So, yeah, you're in the year right now where it's it's just the roam in the hallway part <laughs> and, and, and the appointment, you know, so I, I have had a few students make appointments with me. Um, uh, some have come in to meet with me. I'm here every day. Uh, others have done it on Zoom. Interested to know if you have any fun anecdotes about your college experience. Um, well, this will just give you a sense, I have, I have two, one for my engineering days and one for my architecture days. This will just give you a sense of what it was like to be the only female engineering student when I started off. Um, professors did not want me. They, 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 they kept saying I was taking a seat away from a guy. And I'm thinking like, I think there's pretty much open enrollment in this class. So you know, anybody who wants to take the class, I'm not taking the seat away, it's an auditorium. Um, but uh, there was a professor, I was a freshman, um, and a professor uh, first would bar, like uh, not allow me in the classroom. And one time when I got in the classroom, he had uh, the boys in the front row pick me up and throw me out of the classroom. Uh, and I would say that is what, um, I was always very shy. So um, it just made me really resolute in terms of finding any way I could study and get, in, get involved in things. And, and in many ways, I look at that now and think I was, I was lucky to have to learn to, to fight, to, to, to study and to be a part of things. And, uh, and, and it, also, it also pushed me to make sure that I was the best student any of those guys ever taught in, in their entire life. I, I wanted to prove them wrong by, by not keeping me there. And I think I worked so much harder in order to do that. So that's not a fun anecdote, but th this one's uh, 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 an interesting one. So I did architecture school late in life. So I was in my mid thirties when I did a five-year B arc, because nobody told me that with an already a bachelor's degree in engineering that I could do a master's degree in architecture. No, I, you can't do that in engineering. You can't go off and do a master's of engineering if you hadn't done a bachelor's degree. So I didn't even think, I went and did a whole five-year B arc. But of course, because I had all this background um, and, you know, and I had been very successful, um, you know, I'm, you know, I'm Practically, I wasn't 20 years older, but almost 20 years older than everybody else in freshman year. I'm thinking like, I know what's going on. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty smart and, and pretty this poor kids, you know, I, I got all. And uh, I found that it really annoyed the professors. And, uh, and they, they, every time I would present anything, they'd go, well, we can see you're an engineer, too bad you don't really get how we think as architects. And so I would hear that. And uh, finally, um, uh, you know, after a while, I quit telling them I had that background. And then um, because I already had a bachelor's degree, I didn't have to take any of the core curricular classes because I, I didn't have to take 
math or, you know, English history or, you know, or American history. I didn't take anything like that. So I had lots of time for free electives. I still had to cover all the same, you know, credit hours as the other undergraduate, but I had free, free electives. So I had lots of time for free electives. And then because I was a licensed mechanical engineer, they automatically waived me for every single technology class, every single one. Uh, and I've actually never had any of them before. So, you know, I didn't have environmental systems as an engineer. I had heat transfer and thermodynamics. I didn't have structures as an engineer. I had statics and dynamics. Um, I didn't have, you know, construction materials uh, as an engineer. I had materials physics, I had materials chemistry, and materials science. So I had all the fundamentals, but I never had any of the applicants, but they automatically waived me. So I didn't have any of the core curricular requirements of, of being an undergraduate student, and I had none of the technology requirements. So talk about free electives. I took every one of those at the art school. So I took painting, sculpture, photography. I took all of those. So uh, by the time I was in my fifth year, and I never forget putting my, we did thesis, had my thesis drawings up and the jury looks at it and they go, you know, and they didn't know because I'd stopped telling anybody in my second year that I was an engineer. They looked at it and they go, oh, um, the drawings are exquisite. It, it's clear um, that you came from a painting background. Too bad you don't understand technology. And I thought to myself, I did it. <laughs> I completely changed everything. So <laughs> I am now officially an architecture because I think I don't understand technology. <laughs> For any students, uh, given all of these kinds of crises and unprecedented changes we've been experiencing, is there any specific career advice that you would give now that might have been different from what you would have told them maybe five or 10 years ago? Well, I think that I, I mentioned uh, part of the first part of it. I used to think that, that, that the, the right professional network uh, was key and that's the advice I would have given five or 10 years ago. Now I'm thinking of it being expansive, uh, that uh, the more different things that you can expose yourself to. Uh, I, I don't think that anybody in the, any, any of our fields for the built environment, I, you know, we, we, we tend to come to school, we, we do our thing, we, we never leave the school unless we have to. Um, this is not just about expanding your interests in other fields. It's about sort of putting yourself into a place where you question the very way you think about things. So, you know, how different would you be thinking about an urban context if you had an opportunity uh, to study policy over at the LBJ school? Um, how how, how differently would you think about it if you started going to city council meetings and, and listen to the way people are talking about their neighborhoods within that? Um, how differently would you think about uh, uh, materials um, if you, know, you ended up uh, taking um, a, a course in, in robotics you know, over in engineering? Or how differently you think about materials if you decided to do an internship, uh, you know, uh, working in, in construction or fabrication. Looking, looking at every opportunity you can to not sort of like complete your education, but to challenge it. Like looking at it from a different viewpoint that somebody who has a very different starting point, who's looking at something similar is, 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 is going to be seeing it in a completely different way. You want to try to step in, into their area to see why they see your field in a, in a very different way. Um, so anytime you have that opportunity to, to flip the way that you're looking at something, anything that pushes you or challenges you is, is what you should be doing. Um, and I'm going to be talking about current and for, for future students in the School of Architecture, but, but all, all current and, and future students, you should be uncomfortable. You know, uh, whenever, whenever you, you know, someone tells you what you want to hear, 
or you, you study thing that reinforces what it is that you believe, um, think instead, I need to be uncomfortable uh, because it's being uncomfortable is where you learn. It's being uncomfortable, uh, like troubled by something that you're hearing that, that gets you to sort of like re-examine everything. Uh, like, why is this so, uh, you know, on that? But it, it is that sort of moments of being uncomfortable where the, the, true, the true development of knowledge uh, takes place. And we don't spend enough time letting ourselves be uncomfortable. You know, it's, um, uh, and, I, and I, you know, politically is, is one of those places where it's really hard for us. Um, and, uh, but, but, it, but, it, but it, it goes to, to so many things. I, I think about all the things I avoid like I'm not going to watch this particular station or this particular news program uh, because it's going to make me uncomfortable and uh, and make me angry. Except it's only by watching that that I think that I start to to think about different kinds of problems than I thought there were before. You know, different kinds of issues than I thought there were before. Um, and that's where, interestingly enough, there's a wonderful book about research that says that the best, that what you want for, if you're gonna be doing a PhD, what troubles you the most? Because somewhere in asking, why am I so troubled by this? You, you'll come up with the question you should be asking and the question you should be researching. So yeah, find things that trouble you. Don't put yourself in danger, don't go there. <laughs> but, but, but respond to that which makes you uncomfortable as opposed to sort of like avoiding it. You were talking about music and you just mentioned drawing and you seem to have a very multifaceted series of interests that you've uh, expressed in your life. But what are some of your other hobbies and interests outside of architecture? And uh, how do you integrate those things into your work and your approach to architecture and design? So, um, you know, I think one of the things about the design fields um, is that, you know, basically your avocation is also your vocation. You know, you love, we're in this because we love what we do, you know, and so, uh, you know, you, you, your, your time uh, and, and your spare time is, is very engaged with this. But the one thing that is not about architecture per se, but, but becomes about it is that um, you know, and it started, you know, early on for me, um, I, I don't like to travel as a tourist. I like to be places for extended periods of time. Uh, and so I, I, ex I've accepted every fellowship, every teaching opportunity, every working opportunity where I can be in another country. Uh, and, you know, it's an opportunity for me to be incredibly uncomfortable in the beginning uh, when I don't speak the language and I don't know how to get around, but I'm incredibly uncomfortable. But it, it, it's like this, this unbelievable, you know, eyes opening up to, I didn't realize how small my world was until I moved to India. You know, I, I didn't realize... Um, how uh, open uh, and warm and collaborative people were, uh, you know, in in uh, in Tennessee until I moved to Germany. <laughs> so there, there's a whole series of of these things like that. But um, you know, I've left all of those experiences with sort of a different understanding about the human environment, a different understanding about you know how people engage. How they how they they develop their connections. Uh, I I build friendships in, in all of these different places, and these are the, the friends that that I have kept in many cases for decades, uh, and still see uh, when I can. And this is actually part of my planning. My big trip <laughs> is 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 you know first going to India, you know, to visit my friends back in India, and then different places like that. But beginning to to step out. Um, immerse yourself. You never, you never can understand uh, as an outsider. 
And it's not like I ever, ever understood uh, what, what really, you know, the differences were. I just became more aware that, that they existed and that there were other worlds beside the little world that, that I grew up in. It kind of re, reinvigorates me uh, and, and makes me, uh, you know, in, in each experience like that, I learn a little bit more. You know, I, I, I see a little bit more and it makes my world a little bit bigger. And I think that's been a big part of how I've rethought the value of what we, we do as the designers of the built environment. Um, it, it's that it, it is completely taking me away from the beautiful object artifact, the, the, the perfect thing or the beautiful thing. It's really made me realize um, how little our fields have engaged with the rest of the world. Um, how, how we just sort of like, we're, we're all about doing, uh, you know, multi-million dollar homes for wealthy people. We're all about doing these beautiful museums uh, and, and signature buildings. How little we have, we've touched the built environment of the world. And, and every time I go to one of these places and I, and I, I get a chance to sort of like stay um, uh, with friends and, and sort of understand how differently they engage with their, their physical environment, it, it cracks, it cracks my understanding, starts to chip away uh, at the rigidity of my own upbringing. So that, that, that's not a hobby, but it's passion. It, it, it's what I think about doing and what I love most to do. Yeah. And barbecue. I love barbecue. Mm -hmm. you know, so I go to any barbecue place I can go to. That's my, that's my real hobby is <laughs> finding good barbecue. I'll be happy to share my places with you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> We really like to thank you for joining us and allowing us to interview you. For those of you watching, we hope that you've gotten to know our Dean a little bit better, and we hope that you choose to come and join us at UTSOA. Bye, y'all. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Hasta luego. Yeah. <laughs>